水、カンタオノンアンダインフォン、ハイエナジアクセラレイタリサチョーガニゼーションイツ、ジャパニーズ、ビゲスト、アクセラレイタ、コンプレックス、アンド、デリケイト、フォー、パーティクル、フィジックス、アンド、マテリアル、サイエンス。アンド、ファーストボー、アイドライクトゥサンク、ディオーガナイザー、トゥ、ギブミーザー、チャンス、トゥ、ハーバープレゼンテーション、アバウト、アワー、リセント、ワーク。So today, I'd like to introduce the characterization of magnetic materials, or it's especially the imaging or visualization of the magnetic properties using X ray microscopy. So, the, we have many collaborators, and the, the, most of the samples are provided from the Toyota Motor Company. For neodymium ion boron magnet and、uh, in the samarium, cobalt or samarium ion nitride is、uh, provided by Shinetsu or Mizuno Metal Mine companies. And uh, uh, this work is funded by the JST funding and also the、uh, element. Strategy Initiative Center for, for Magnetic Materials、uh, directed. By Hirosawa Sensei. Okay, so the outline of my talk is that、uh, at first I, I briefly introduce what the X ray microscope,、uh, especially our microscope, is a scanning X ray transmission microscope and、uh, what it is. And it's、uh, this element specific、uh, characteristic. As well as、uh, pretty high spatial resolution, and also the, its capability of the X ray magnetic circular dichroism, it, that's, it, the contrast from the XMCD is very large, so it is very easy to visualize the XMCD contrast using、uh, scanning X ray transmission microscope, and I call it STXM or STXM. And、uh, the samples for the materials characterization is the、uh, uh, first topic is the neodymium ion boron hot deformed magnet. And also, the, with the combination of the micromagnetic modeling, we visualize the dipolar energy density. And、uh, the last part. Uh, we, uh, I introduced the XMCD nanospectroscopy. It's a, a, a kind of the two dimensional microscopic mapping of the magnetic、uh, moment plus the X ray spectroscopic characterization at each point. Okay, so the, at first,、uh, I'd like to talk what kind of, uh, 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 of the things we are interested in. And we are interested in the coercivity mechanism or the magnetization process of the magnetic materials. And it is、uh, written by the, these very famous c h r o m u l a models、uh, formula. That the coercivity is expressed by the,、uh, the HA and the M with the, the coefficient of the alpha and N effective. But、uh, as far as I know, the microscopic origin of the alpha or N effective is still unknown. So we want to. Some, uh, we want to visualize these kinds of、uh, parameters in、uh, real space、uh, with the use of the microscopic modeling, micromagnetic modeling. So the, we, very, we simplify these models that these、uh, kind of、uh, Anisotropic field is uh, mainly uh, contributed from the exchange interaction and also the mag、uh, magnetocrystalline interaction. It's an intrinsic 
uh, physical property of the magnetic materials, and it is uh, only the interaction is only affecting the very short range, so it's a kind of short range correlations, and also the latter part is uh, inhomogeneous, uh, comes from the inhomogeneous magnetization, or it's a stray field of the stray field inside the bulk magnet. So it mainly comes from the dipolar interactions and dipolar interaction, it has, you know that it's a very long range correlation. So uh, we divide the correlation into two parts, short range and long range, and we want to visualize these kind of correlations. Okay, so to visualize these kinds of magnetic interaction or magnetic properties, we are doing, uh, mainly doing the XMCD microscopy to see the magnetic or chemical image of the, for example, it's a, a magnetic domain structure of the uh, sintered magnet. And also the we as uh, later I show you the dipolar interaction map. So it is uh, calculated from this kind of the magnetic uh, magnetization map to the dipolar interaction map. And recently we developed a new uh, microscope at uh, our institute and it's a very small one. So it's a kind of uh, size of the notebook. notebook. And, but it's a pretty high resolution, and we do the using this kind, of, this new machine. We can do the XMCD nanospectroscopy. So the uh, in new our newly developed machine, it's uh, the sometimes the problem of the nanospectroscopy is that uh, drift when we changing the energy of the X-rays, the, we should change the focus length, and also we should collect the drift of the image. And in our new machine, we succeeded to the collection of these kind of parameters, so we can see the very uh, clear magnetic moment quantitative map and also that it's, uh, we, I will show that it's a nanoscale XMCD spectroscopy. It's, uh, so uh, we can get the XMCD for the one point of the X-ray beam. So it, it corresponds to the diameter of the 15 to 20 nanometer area. Okay, so at the first section, I'd like to talk about the the brief introduction of the microscope. So the X-ray, the principle of the X-ray microscope is very simple. So it is much simpler than the optical microscope. It is because we only use one uh, optical element. So so-called, uh, it's a kind of X-ray lens, and in Lesion of the X-rays, as you know, that in the lesion in X-rays, we cannot use uh, some kind of, uh, of reflective optics like the optical microscope. So uh, it is because we don't have a transmission type lens for the X-ray lesion. It is because the reflective index of the X-ray is very small. So it's about 10 to the minus six. Uh, meters, so the, when using the similar objective lens used in the optical microscope, the focal length should be uh, a few kilometers. So we cannot use this kind of optics. So we should use this kind of not refractive, it's a diffractive optics. So using the diffraction to the to focus the X-ray to the very small spot size. So the, it is called the Fresnel zone plate. Fresnel zone plate is a kind of 
uh, these kind of uh, uh, patterns to its uh, kind of um, donut type links are uh, located and uh, in the in these kind of diffractive optics the uh, spatial resolution is limited by the outermost zone width so the it is not the it is only the uh, limited from the width of the zone plate so at the, at the, at that moment, the uh, zone plate fabrication of the microfabrication technique using the e-beam lithography is limited. So the typical uh, spatial resolution is about, uh, for example, 15 to 20 nanometers. And we should stop the, uh, it is very, usually it's very difficult because uh, this width of the zone should be very narrow, but the, the thickness of the zone plate should be at comparatively thick, about uh, 100 nanometer or 200 nanometer. So the aspect ratio must be more than 10. So it's uh, very difficult. But uh, uh, now this kind of optical element is very easily available. So the, it is sold by several companies. So we just buy these kind of zone plate and put it into the X-ray beam. And uh, we have uh, some aperture to cut the um, desirable order of the X-rays. And then, so well, we get the very small spot of the X-rays. And then we scan the samples to get these kind of images of the transmission to, to counting the uh, transmitted X-rays. And also to uh, uh, obtain the informa magnetic information, we use the XMCD, so X-ray magnetic circular dichroism effect. And it is a kind of magnet optic effect in X-ray lesions. And very good things to this XMCD is that we can get the quantitative uh, uh, information of the orbital magnetic moment as well as the spin magnetic moment. So it's very simple that we can uh, measure the two different uh, X-ray absor absorption spectrum uh, by changing the polarization of the X-rays. So the, we get we produce the circularly polarized X-rays and the, to the see the difference between the absorption spectroscopy of the left circularly polarized light and the right circularly polarized light. And then we get this kind of so-called XMCD spectrum. And, but, and qualitatively, it's, very, the, it's a very easy rule. So we just see this kind of the, this L3 part and L2 part and the and see the intensity of this part. And if the, this A and B is not canceled, that it means that these samples have the orbital magnetic moment. And also, the spin magnetic moment can be calculated as the, this intensity minus two times of this intensity. So it is very easy to get uh, very quantitative uh, magnetic moment from this XMCD spectroscopy. So the so it means that the contrast obtained by this X-ray microscope is closely re related to the spin or orbital magnetic moment. So the uh, analysis of the, the 
magnetic domain pattern is uh, quite easy. It is because it's not uh, uh, because it's uh, very uh, well known physical properties. Okay, so the this is uh, our in this uh, presentation we use this kind of X-ray microscope and uh, microscope. And at first, oh, we show that the, when we change the sample size, the ma magnetic domain patterns is very much different. It is because uh, the, at first I write say that the, in this uh, method, the sample thickness is very limited. So the the X-ray is not the not very much transmitted in these kind of uh, energies. So the typical uh, thickness of the samples uh, about um, about it's uh, 50 to 100 nanometers. Uh, so it is. Uh, mostly uh, co compatible with the TEM image. So we can see the TEM as well as the uh, X-ray microscope image in the same area. So it is uh, so-called, uh, it's a dysplosium added uh, sintered magnet. So the grain size should be the, a few to five micrometers and we can see the many uh, maze-like domains, and uh, it is a uh, hot deformed magnet. So in case of hot deformed magnet, it is said that uh, in hot deformed magnet, the sample size, the uh, grain size is uh, smaller than the critical size of the uh, single domain size. So we can see that it's, uh, uh, it's uh, we can see that it's a black or white grains are existed in this kind of samples, and it means that in each grains, it's a, some single. It's not like this. It's not like maze-like domains. It's a single domain-like patterns with uh, with uh, plus or minus uh, magnetic moment to the. the to the direction of the light. So you, you can see that using this technique, we can see the uh, magnetic domains of the samples uh, with uh, quite high resolution. So for example, so when we do about the sintered magnet, we can cut the, the, the samples like this way. So the typical size thickness of the sample is about 80 nanometers. So, the, uh, so in this direction, we can see the several lanes in this direction, but in this direction, the every grain is very cut it by the very thin shape. So the, of course, so the, these, in these samples, we cannot, uh, uh, see the any high coercivity in these samples. So it becomes very soft. Uh, it is because we are uh, cut by the FIB to very thin, so it's no more. Um, so the high coercivity, but we can see these kind of magnetic domains and also the it's a triple junction or the grain boundaries, and we get also get this uh, kind of uh, chemical image. So for example, in this kind of sintered magnet, we can get the, uh, the images of the uh, chemical images of the iron or ne neodymium or iron, and we can see that in this kind of uh, uh, grain boundary phase, it is uh, 
neodymium rich as well as the iron is poor. So it's a so-called neodymium rich phase. And also the very uh, interesting point in X-ray microscopy is it, it, this has an element specific capability. So uh, it is uh, one example for the dysprosium diffusion process uh, neodymium ion boron magnet. And when we see the in the neodymium uh, absorption edge, we can see the magnetic domains only from the neodymium ion. So in case of uh, neodymium, uh, it's a dysprosium diffusion process one. So we can see the very clear uh, patterns uh, from patterns like this. And when we changing the same sample, same positions, and uh, only the changing the energy to the dysprosium absorption edge, so we get the uh, magnetic moment from the dysprosium. And uh, you can see that there's uh, no dysprosium. In this part, there's no magnetic domains. It is because that there's no dysprosium this region. Uh, it is uh, uh, very um, un uniformly uh, diffusion process to, want to see these kind of uh, things. So we, we can see that in this part, there's uh, no dysprosium. And when we go back to these pictures and compare the two images, so we can see that in, if the, uh, in the region that uh, exists at neodymium as well as the dysprosium, we can see the much uh, wider domain width in these regions. And compared to the, the dysprosium free area, so in this area, the domain width is thinner compared to the, this area. So using the uh, as I said that we know the thickness and we can see the domain width, uh, we can calculate the domain wall energy of this kind, this part. And uh, we know that, uh, for example, the, the, when we uh, uh, see the dysprosium added grain, the this domain wall energy is 10% uh, larger. So the, in this kind of technique is also very useful for sintered magnet. For, for example, this kind of the dysprosium added or dysprosium diffusion process magnet, uh, when the, this kind of added uh, element is uh, inhomogeneously uh, distributed, we can see the change of the chemical uh, distributions and as well as, uh, for example, the change in the magnetic domains. Okay, so we change the next to slide to the case of the hot deformed magnet. So in hot, I, I, I think uh, you already know what the hot deformed magnet is and the hot deformed magnet is a uh, very uh, nanocrystalline type of the magnet and, uh, and the, the, we introduce the grain boundary in infiltration with uh, neodymium copper alloys. So we have uh, two samples with and without the infiltration of the neodymium copper alloys and uh, in using the infiltration that uh, it is so that the in neodymium kappa infiltrations is decoupled the uh, exchange coupling between each magnetic grains. So the uh, coercivity is enhanced. But the, in our test samples, we introduce too much amount of 40% of volume fraction of the neodymium kappa alloys. So the, it lost the uh, Remanence magnetization a lot. Oh, and in these samples, the bulk coercivity is about 
16 kilo L set and uh, the MRM is lazy about 0 0.9, so the so the o almost all the uh, uh, particles are aligned to the C axis, and uh, it is we use the same almost the same kind of sample preparations and uh, from the hot deformed magnet samples we cut the, these samples by using FIB and uh, cut these kind of uh, samples and see the X-ray images. And in case of the hot deformed magnet, we can apply a magnetic field. So it's not an in situ appli application of the magnetic field, but uh, we apply the magnetic field and go back in putting the sample back to the microscope and seeing the, uh, observe the exactly the same position. So we, when we changing the applied magnetic field, you can see that uh, at first it's uh, almost magnetized sample. So the, most of the part is black. And then when applying the magnetic field, it is getting uh, whiter and whiter. And in about 10 kilo set, it's almost uh, a part of the white part and black part is uh, comparable, so it's uh, almost similar to the coercivity. And when we see the, these pictures to the magnetization curve, we can see that these kinds of domains is changed in each part of the domains, changing the the, at the comparable uh, magnetization curve. So, uh, for example, the, at first part, the, this domain is unchanged, but this domain is changed from black to white. And at this uh, point, the, this kind of uh, uh, area is uh, diverse. And when we change, the, we see the, these kind of uh, diverse domains from the high resolution TEM the, and searching for the, the difference between in the microstructures, uh, we can see the very sharp difference. For example, in this uh, areas, uh, the in this kind of single reversed area, the, uh, this, the grain boundary is be, seems very sharp in TEM images. And in case of this kind of uh, the uh, reversal of the, mal the several grains at the, at the same time, the, this kind of the grain boundary is not very sharp. So in case of the, that the grain boundary is not very sharp, the many grains are reversed at the same time. OK, so we, uh, so we uh, prepare the samples with uh, different size, different grain size, and also the uh, different amount of the neodymium kappa infiltrations. Uh, we can see observe this kind of uh, X-ray microscopy studies, and in case that the la in case of the, the larger grain size, the almost uh, all the many part of the grains show the the uh, the mulch uh, domain patterns, but in case of the in case when the grain size becomes smaller. Uh, we can see the almost all the particle is uh, like uh, single domains. And when we compare the uh, as deformed samples and the neodymium kappa infiltrated samples, the, we can see the uh, not the clear uh, difference from these kind of patterns. But uh, in case of the neodymium of kappa infiltrations, the coercivity is 
very much enhanced from the 92L state to the 22L state. So to see the difference of uh, neodymium kappa in effect of neodymium kappa infiltration, we should uh, analyze this kind of data more carefully and we want to see the magnetic interaction between, we, want, we should see the magnetic interaction between each particles. Okay, so the, to analyze this data, we use the micromagnetic modeling. So our goal is that visualize this kind of magnetic interaction in real space. So the, so the, in it's a very simple micromagnetic models and the micromagnetic uh, gives free energy is, uh, written by the exchange of anisotropy and magnetostatic and Zeeman energy and the Zeeman energy is almost trivial so we don't uh, care about this because we apply some field so it's trivial and so the we and at this moment uh, we focused on how to visualize this kind of magnetostatic uh, uh, energy contribution of the magnetization reversal process. And uh, at first, I very simply show you that we can calculate this uh, dipolar energy term is from the very simple modeling. And as I said, that it's a very thin film magnet. So we assume the very uh, strong assumption that uh, this uh, model is uh, two-dimensional and uh, every uh, in two-dimensional and the magnetic charge is distributed in this plane and the uh, opposite sign of the magnetic charge is distributed in this plane. So when we changing uh, from using uh, this very simple equation, we can calculate the magnetic scalar potential from only from the magnetization distributions, and then we can calculate the dipolar field from only from the magnetic distribution. So it is a very simple formula, but uh, it's only applicable for the very thin film samples. And if we know this kind of uh, 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 kind of matrix, it's, uh, it, we can um, calculate, the, very simply calculate the uh, magnetic stray field. So using this uh, uh, modeling, we can calculate it from the magnetization distribution and could magnetization distributions and also it's this very simple form to here and calculate the integrate the data and we can get the stray field image. So it means that the stray field means that in these images the in the this uh, red part there's a very high stray field is applied it is this stray field is come from the, the uh, neighbor uh, grains by the dipolar interaction. And also the, in combination with the magnetization distributions and the magnetic stray field, we can get the magnetostatic energy density. So it is a kind of the dipolar energies energy densities map in the real space and also we apply the, this kind of uh, magnetization reversal the mag images and calculate the magnetic stray field then we can see that uh, magnetic stray field is uh, very much changed and uh, as you know that at first the magnetic stray field energy is very high but it becomes low to compensate the energy to gain the energies. 
uh, or to gain the energy to lowering the magnetostatic energy. So it is, uh, this uh, graph is uh, very much suitable for the, uh, uh, the theories that the, in the magnetic domains is formed to minimize the magnetostatic energies. So when we see the magnetization process closely, the, we can, we say, we observe there's a two kinds of uh, uh, process to minimize the stray field. And one is that, for example, from here to here, the, this kind, this part is reversed. And in the, in the reversal of this part, it means that uh, in this part, this, this part is very easily reversed. So the, in case of these kind of brains, the magnetization reversal occurs that only this single grain particle is reversed. But when we see these kind of uh, past areas, uh, it is like this way. So if there's a very hard, very kind of hard grains that be very difficult to reverse, then the neighboring grains is reversed to minimize uh, uh, magnetostatic energies. So we should concentrate on the, uh, the difference between these kind of planes and these kind of planes are that the, the spatial resolution of the X-ray microscope is, as I said, that it's about 15 to 20 nanometers. So uh, we cannot see the very clear uh, image of the grain boundary phase or a grain shape. So the, in combination with the uh, TEM images, we want to clarify the difference between these kind of particles and these kind of particles. Okay, so the, then I skip this part and, okay, so then next part, is when we want, we want to change, see the difference between the as deformed samples and the neodymium kappa infiltrated samples. And in case of neodymium kappa infiltrated samples, the reduction rate of the remanence to 10 kilo, applied 10 kilo step, the reduction rate is very much changed. So the, in case of as deformed samples, the, the reduction rate of the, when we apply the 10 kilo L step, the magnetic, magnetostatic energy is, uh, is getting 100% to 50%. So it uh, uh, lost the four, about 50% of the magnetostatic energy. But in case of the neodymium kappa infiltrated samples, the, it only lost 35% of the magnetostatic energies. So it means that the, when we uh, infiltrate the neodymium kappa eutectic alloys, the, it is, it, uh, it uh, is uh, affect for the decoupling between the, these kind each grains and resulting the reduction of the magnetostatic energies. So the so as I explained that, that this kind of uh, uh, of microscope technique is very useful to see these kind of uh, uh, physical properties that is very that is difficult to uh, estimate from the bulk magnetic measurement. So the, at first, at this part, I, at the far, at this part, I briefly introduced the X-ray microscope and also the, 
the, in case of the neodymium of ion boron hotly formed magnet, the dipolar interaction is the major factor for the high coercivity in this kind of measurement. Okay, so I go to the second part, and the second part is uh, uh, the, at the first part, it's a microscopy, so it's a two-dimensional mapping, and the second part, it is spectroscopy. So it's uh, getting a spectrum to get some information. And uh, in the, our next target is the actual uh, mag bulk magnetic materials. So we, for examples, the, from the polycrystalline materials or powder samples. And we want to get the intrinsic physical properties or or gain the information on the electronic structures from these kind of bulk samples. And uh, the idea of the, uh, our nanoscale XMCD spectroscopy is very simple. For example, the, in the conventional the X-ray experiment, the beam size is much bigger than the each grain of the each grain of the bulk materials, so to get the information on the uh, intrinsic intrinsic physical properties, we usually doing the making the single crystal of the single crystalline materials or larger materials. But in case of the focused X-ray, so in typical X-ray, beam size is about 100 micrometers. But in case of our focused X-ray, it's a 50 nanometer. So only, a, only a one grain of the polycrystalline materials is enough to see the uh, single crystal uh, characterizations. So the, in case of, uh, of XMCD nanospectroscopy, we get a single crystal part from this, uh, from bulk, cutting the single crystalline part from the bulk material to see the intrinsic physical properties. So for example, that our sample preparation is like this way. So the, in this uh, XMCD nanospectroscopy characterization, the sample preparation is very difficult. So at first we see the, it's a, a completely uh, uh, bulk polycrystalline material, so it's not sintered. So the, uh, the axis of each grain is uh, randomly distributed. So at first, uh, using the car microscope to see the, in, see the direction of the grains. And for example, in this part, the direction of the grains is like uh, this way, and in this part, in like this way. So when uh, uh, careful observation of the car microscope, and we get uh, this kind of uh, stripe part to the using the FIB and the, making this kind of sample and attach to the TM grid and also to see the, uh, the characterization, we can see the trans TM diffraction to see the uh, sample orientations carefully. And also in the same sample, we measure the X-ray microscope. And this is uh, X-ray microscope in, uh, images at the right uh, polarized, the circularly polarized X-ray and left one. And when we see the difference between L minus R, it, it because we can see the very clear mag magnetic domain image. And when we uh, sum, add, we measure the sum of these images, we can see some the different contrast. And this contrast comes from the thickness of the sample. So the, it uh, comes from the the thickness of the sample is uh, not uniform, so uh, we can also can see the quantitative information on the uh, magnetic domains as well as the thickness of the samples. So the samples. So 
and when we see uh, we uh, see the these kind of images in each point about uh, 200 energy points we can see and to focus on this area we can see the X-ray absorption spectroscopy as well as XMCB spectroscopy at the single pixel. So, and then using uh, similar, using this kind of technique, uh, we can uh, characterize the samarium cobalt type uh, pure materials and also the this is a commercially available magnet and also this uh, one part the cutting the one particle of the samarium iron nitride samples and see the samarium uh, x-ray absorption and samarium xmcb spectrum and it is uh, almost identical so the it's uh, not very interesting but uh, in, when we changing the samarium cobalt to samarium to iron 70 nitrogen 3 and also the samarium plus many um, different uh, layers element, the samarium iron is not affected in these kind of things. And uh, from the comparison of the data analysis, the, we can get the information that uh, this is uh, samarium is uh, uh, completely so uh, three plus and we, we can you can see that the, from this data we can calculate the magnet orbital magnetic moment and spin magnetic moment and it's uh, very uh, easily and very good data it is because uh, in samarium compounds the orbital magnetic moment and the spin magnetic moment have the completely the opposite direction so the completely opposite direction so it is said that in samarium 3 plus is uh, the uh, orbital moment and speed moment has the opposite direction and so you can see the no almost no net magnetization but in this uh, technique we can uh, distinguish the orbital magnetic moment and spin magnetic moment so in in some in the case of the, in samarium so the when this kind of uh, net magnetic moment is almost zero, we can see clearly a very uh, clear magnetization patterns. Okay. So the, in the last slide, as I said that we can measure the thickness of, of the samples from the data so we can plot the thickness and the magnetic moment in this part. And uh, we can see this kind of uh, path that shows a uh, uh, very small magnetic moment. And, but it's not a very, not a very interesting part. And it is because the, when we uh, uh, image this part, then we show that it is uh, domain boundary. So the in domain boundary, the samarium cobalt domain boundary of the samarium cobalt is very sharp. So compared to the our spatial resolution, so the in this part the magnetic moment is not uh, is uh, is in one in one in the our spot size there's a, a plus plus and minus then we can see the uh, domain boundaries, so we can get the, uh, the, some small uh, amount of the data. But when we uh, normalize this uh, spin and orbital uh, ratio, it becomes uh, almost one. Okay, so the, in conclusion, at the first part, we will show that 
in X-ray microscope, we can see not only from the magnetization distribution, but in combination with the micromagnetic modeling, we can see the magnetostatic energies. And in second part, the, uh, it is, uh, we think it's useful because uh, the, in, for example, the commercially available samples or powder samples from powder samples, we can get the very intrinsic physical properties that usually this, this kind of spectra is only uh, extracted from the single crystal because, but using the very small spot size, we can do this kind of spectroscopic characterization from the bulk materials very easily. So uh, the next challenge of the, this uh, experiment is that we get too much data. So for example, in this kind of nanospectroscopic characterization, for example, we uh, get uh, one, 100 pixels and 100 pixels and the energy point of 200. So it means that in a few hours, we get uh, 10,000 X-ray spectra. So the, now the analysis is the uh, uh, most problematic part. So we will do the analysis more efficiently to get the information on, uh, to do the magnetic characterization using X-ray microscope easily in near future. 